Hi, everybody. Wishing all of you a very good evening. Thank you for joining us on a Wednesday evening. Uh, I'm Praneet. I head the undergraduate business and university partnerships for the Indian office. Uh, super glad to be hosting you guys. We're just going to wait for another two or three or four minutes for everybody else to come in. Uh, and we will officially start. I am joined here by two extremely acclaimed co colleagues of mine from the United States, Elizabeth Nasser and Stephanie Nesbitt and our vice president for university partnerships in the US, Jerry Carr. I'm sure you know him. I'm sure you've seen him in the past uh, during our US university webinars. Uh, so we're super excited for this. Just another couple of minutes for everybody else to join in and we will start right away. But what waits for you on the other side of it is an extremely affordable new age program in the United States. Um, it's an MBA and it's extremely affordable. It's from one of the most eminent schools in the United States. And the school actually features in one third uh, of the highest paid employee base in the United States, especially in the Northeast part of it. So, uh, you know, I, I am sure that you glued and you hooked to your screens just another two or three minutes and we will be right here with you. Meanwhile, uh, I, I think I've been made very clear with the, from the university that you can put down every question that you have on the Q&A button. At the bottom most panel of your Zoom accounts, you will see a Q&A box. Make sure you keep asking us as many questions as you can. Jerry and I will keep trying on the side that we keep answering everything that can be addressed by us. Anything that concerns the uh, university guests can be addressed by them, right? I think now is a good time for us to start. We've got about 61 students. Normally we have about 80 to 100, but I think they will keep joining in in the interest of time and the interest of everybody's welfare here. I will start the webinar officially. So once again, wishing all of you a very good evening. Thank you for joining us on Wednesday. Uh, I, I, I know it gets extremely difficult sometimes to join webinar, especially when you're working, especially when uh, you've got your own university colleges to go into. Um, but I'm super grateful that we've got so many folks here waiting on us. Uh, I'm accompanied here by two extremely smart women who are extremely accomplished and have years and actually decades of experience backing them. We've got Elizabeth Nasser, who's the Director of Academic Business Development at Utica. Uh, Ms. Nasser has held roles at Boston University, Simons College, Northeastern and the American University. I'm sure you get so much from her in her insights in why you should study an MBA, why you should study in the US, because she's worked with a range of global firms as IBM, BP, Biogen, Nokia, LG, and the list goes on and on. So the point is that she's extremely accomplished and we'll make sure that we, you know, we, 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 we get her to address as many doubts as you guys have. Stephanie, who's here with us, is the Assistant Professor and Director of Risk Management and Insurance uh, plus holds the Dean of Business and Justice position at Utica University. So glad to see you, Stephanie and Elizabeth. Um, I am more than honored to be hosting you um, and also would like to introduce their university. Uh, Utica uh, is a university based in New York State. Uh, it was initially called U Utica College in about 1946 and has now recently been approved with the university status from the New York State Board of Regents. Utica, like I mentioned, is one of the uh, very well-known and acclaimed university in New York State. The fact that it's in New York State uh, says a lot about the student outcomes that you, you guys can foresee for yourself. But what's also important is that Utica has an MBA with upgrad abroad where you do a part of the coursework. So out of the 12 courses, you do three courses um, in India with us from IMD Ghaziabad, which is a 
completed AACSP school in Ghaziabad. So you do the online course, you get three courses waived off. And then finally you move to New York State, you go to Utica uh, and you finish the rest of your coursework. The interesting part is uh, that you've got an MBA in STEM fields as well, which the two of them are gonna be extremely uh, comprehensively speaking about cybersecurity and business analytics. So that's the thing to look forward uh, for. Of course, there's so much more to this and I've let the two women talk, uh, but what's more important for you guys to know is that this is extremely affordable like the webinars topic suggests this MBA will cost you somewhere around 11 lakhs in the United States and about three lakhs with upgrad here on which you're eligible uh, to get so the upgrad portion can give you more scholarships which we will talk about much later but the point that I'm trying to make is that all of this the complete MBA comes within 14 lakhs which is a dream for so many students because Universities in India, like IIM and whatnot, cost you 25 lakhs. That's almost double the amount, double the amount. And so that's what you're getting, a three-year OPT, the optional practical training that you get. Uh, it's a complete deal. And I think which is why you should be all ears and glued to your screens. And I let Elizabeth take this forward from here. I think the first question that I really want to ask her is why do you think that MBA in the US makes sense more than anywhere else in the world. And Stephanie, you're, please feel more than free to jump in. I mean, thank you so much on behalf of Dean Nesbitt and, and myself for, for giving us such a warm welcome. Um, we're enormously excited about the partnership with UpGrad and looking forward to welcoming students here to Utica and to Utica University. Um, I'm, I'm gonna um, start the presentation in a second. I'm also gonna as Dean Nesmith to, to respond to your question as well. But I, I have to tell you that, um, you know, I've been working with top MBA programs in the United States um, and international audiences um, for, as you point out um, so kindly for decades, um, uh, thus aging me slightly, um, but, but the truth be told, um, I have a very clear perspective that an experience of studying in the U.S. for an MBA, and particularly at a place like university, is critically important to the future of somebody who, who is interested in business and business leadership. You know, in, in my mind, um, there is no uh, better place to kind of study uh, uh, the, the, um, the, both the perspectives and the skills that come into an MBA than in the United States. And I'm particularly interested in a place like Utica University, which gives you the perspective on um, how businesses operate in a rural area, how they connect regionally and throughout the United States, and then in the world. And I am incredibly, incredibly um, enthusiastic about both the faculty that we have here, as well as the opportunities that students have to do their both curricular practical training and their optional practical training regionally. So here in Utica or central New York, but also we're equally distant to both Boston and New York City where we have very deep relationships, therefore making this, I think, a, a really unique value proposition for students. Um, and you know, uh, Dean Esma, do you wanna comment on this at all? Uh, sure. Thank you, Elizabeth. And thank you for the, the warm introduction and warm welcome. I, I certainly appreciate it. Um, to, to drive at your question, why MBA studies? Uh, you know, I always like to tell people, um, I got my MBA while I was a working professional. I started um, in my professional career as a practicing attorney. So I went from undergrad to law school here in the United States. And it was when I finished my MBA that my career really accelerated because I had worked um, uh, through my whole legal career as an in-house counsel. And it's been a few decades since I finished my MBA. Um, but I'll tell you that the skills I I I developed during my MBA studies that helped me um, build my leadership, build my understanding of how business works, and layered that in with my underlying um, expertise in the law made me so much more comfortable in the space and made me so much more valuable to my employers. And I felt it. 
I, I, unlike other educational experience where you're like, oh, I've learned something I, and now I go out and get a job. I felt the competence and, and the knowledge that I gained. Um, and so the MBA study, I think, in, and this is my personal bias perhaps, is still one of the best educational opportunities that a student can grab onto because of the breadth of knowledge that you gather. Perhaps it's not as deep as knowledge in you know, a single area of study because you focus on a lot in an MBA, but the breadth is so important and the confidence you gain in just interacting with colleagues who are similarly situated is invaluable. So I'd like Elizabeth to jump in and start talking a little about our program. I'm right. very proud of it and so excited to, to present this opportunity to all of you. Can people see my screen? Yes, Elizabeth. Perfect. Um, so let's start the presentation. Um, Pranit has done a wonderful job of, of doing some of the first couple of slides um, that are in our presentation, but I think um, this is wonderful because it means our messaging is getting through. So these are the things we're going to talk about um, during this brief presentation. Can I also say, please feel free if there is a question about something we're talking about during the presentation, send your questions through uh, to Jerry or Pranit, and we're super happy to answer them during the presentation. We want this to be useful to you. So we're, we're gonna talk about a little bit of the history. Pranit has, has actually mentioned um, some information, so we're not gonna spend a lot of time on that. But we're also gonna mention some of the kind of unique features of the city of Utica and its location, and also the unique features of living and learning uh, both at Utica and on the campus of Utica University. And then I'm gonna turn it over to Stephanie, who's gonna talk specifically about the MBA program and many of the special services um, and support services that we offer uh, along with the program. Quickly, I'm gonna talk about application because you, you um, I think this is the kind of easiest part of this. Um, this, this information is quite clear, but then I'm gonna talk about optional practical training and curriculum practical training and answer a lot of the questions that have already come in regarding the um, opportunity to complete optional practical training and potentially think about other work um, in the United States. We are incredibly focused on making sure that you, um, that we have a clear understanding of the goals you're trying to achieve during this academic program and, and really looking at the whole person in terms of the academic and the professional and even the personal goals you have. And, uh, and we're gonna hopefully through this combination of both academic work and, and other opportunities uh, help you to realize those. So uh, as Pranit talked um, so eloquently about the history of the university, it is interesting to know that this is a very pragmatic university. It was started in 1946 as part of Syracuse University to address the needs of returning veterans from World War II, but it has also evolved over time with the needs of the community, the region, and the world. We currently, um, have five campuses. Um, our main campus is here in Utica, but we also have campuses, two campuses in Florida, one in St. Petersburg and Miramar, and two additional campuses, one in Syracuse, which is actually in Liverpool, and another one in Albany. Um, but really, um, the, the bulk of our students are here on our main campus in Utica. We are also very well known for our online education and our ability to use hybrid models um, to not only um, reach a global audience, but kind of uh, grow our faculty and our research collaborations around the world. You know, I, I love our mission and I think it tells a lot um, about who we are as individuals. Something that Stephanie and I think Jerry and I have talked about too is that we also have kind of um, small town, old world values here where we really are polite, we're kind, we're really interested in an individual who comes here. I think it's a very special place. Um, it's also a place where um, we are super committed to the individual goals. So a couple stats on here I love. 
is that um, we have an 11 to one student to faculty ratio. And we, we are very committed to this notion because as we grow, and clearly you can see we have 40 plus undergrad majors and 20 plus graduate programs, we are ultimately committed to this unique experience students have where they um, really get to communicate what their goals are and they're gonna work with a team of super uh, faculty with lots of experience and, and administrators who are committed to making sure that they can achieve the goals. And I think our alums are some of the um, most prestigious leaders in the fastest growing fields, but they also come back to those kind of hometown values where I think that they have, um, a, they have a focus on helping others to achieve whatever their goals might be. So it's a college of many distinctions, uh, a university of many distinctions. A um, couple that I love here are certainly the business college of distinction. I love that we um, are super focused on outcomes, which include career development. And I also am really thrilled about this equity and inclusion distinction because this is super important to who we are as people and how we want people to develop as they're here and participating across the spectrum. It's a wonderful place. Um, I think Jerry was here and can, can attest. It's a wonderful place to, to be a student. There are nearly 100 clubs and student organizations. Um, it is a wonderful place, whether you're a residential student or a non-residential student. Um, I think we have, um, I took out the slide, but we also have incredible sports teams here, including football and hockey, but also a great commitment to the arts and the arts community here on the Utica campus, as well as in the surrounding areas. So it's a wonderful place to learn and to live. Okay. Utica is a very interesting place. And I think as you're considering um, coming to the United States, it's wonderful to kind of understand the unique features of this, this city. I grew up here, my family was from Utica, but I spent the bulk of my professional career in Washington, DC and Boston, Massachusetts, working for very large universities and organizations and global organizations. I came back here about seven years ago because I um, wanted to be closer to, to family that still lived in Utica, but I was really focused on the innovation going on on the Utica University campus and in the city. The Utica is, is, has always been a center of refugees in the United States. Um, you, we could spend an entire webinar talking about this, but I think it's an enormously interesting place in terms of the culture that we um, have here in Utica. It is um, also in, located in central New York and um, in the state of New York, which is the world's 13th, 13th, I can't even see the slide, so apologies, the world's 11th largest economy. It's, it's also a great location because you can, um, be uh, doing work in this rural regional area, but you can also hop on a bus or hop on a train and go to New York or Boston or think about that for innovation centers um, that are located in both New York and Boston. And I think locally, we are um, really known for our um, centers of innovation that are, are local to Utica in these particular areas, healthcare, manufacturing, entrepreneurship, and information technology. But you also see that this is a place where companies come um, at great speed because as Pranit pointed out earlier on in the, the, the presentation, this is a very affordable place to do um, research of all types, certainly healthcare research, but it's also a place to grow a business with, um, with, a, with not only wonderful talent, um, but cost, reduced costs that make it a wonderful place to work. So, um, you know, we talked about this. Utica is a wonderful place to learn, work, and live. It is a very uh, affordable place to study and live. And, the, and I um, would also say that while affordability is important, the most important reason why you do an MBA and why you consider coming to Utica University is the academic outcomes. 
and our academic outcomes are extraordinary. Um, the class sizes are small. Um, and I think, again, uh, Dean Esmond's going to talk about this a little bit, but I think, again, our faculty are very unique um, in that they continue to re research and consult in their academic disciplines. And the way we think about the MBA is much more focused on real-time applications and helping you to um, helping you to be an ambidextrous leader prepared for today, but thinking about tomorrow's disruptions. I see that there are hands raised. Is there a question? Sure, I'll just check that. Uh, for anybody else who's just raised the hand, apart from the ones that who've already asked stuff on the Q&A button, please make sure you're redirecting any question towards Elizabeth or Stephanie to the Q&A box. And just to make it super clear, so the program that Elizabeth is running you guys through is the program that follows the Indian coursework. So basically what Upgrad does, I'm sure you know about that, that it's that you do one program from in India called AGMP, the Advanced General Management from IMT Kasipa. And right after you move to Utica, getting a waiver for nine credits out, out of uh, the total course that you're doing. And you finish the nine courses on the campus plus a capstone and you're pretty much done. Uh, with you're your always answer. going ahead with my slides. That's my next slide. You're, you're, <laughs> you know, but I appreciate the preview. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that they know where the dots actually link. Sure. Yes, go ahead. I appreciate it. So let's continue on. So I think you already met Dean Nesbitt, but it's really my pleasure to um, introduce her. Um, as she points out, she's both a JD and M an MBA. Um, I am also um, you know, going to say in the most humble way that I think that she is one of the greatest proponents of this program and of international students um, and is really focused on students as individuals. So it is my distinct pleasure to not only work with Dean Nesbitt, but to introduce her today. So let me turn it over to Dean Stephanie Nesbitt. Thank you, Elizabeth. And I think the first thing I want to say, seeing that um, photo pop up, no, I am not wearing the exact same outfit, <laughs> um, but a blue blazer and some type of orange blouse is a frequent for me. So I do have on a different blouse today. I want to let you know that. Um, and my hair is a bit grayer. Anyway, welcome again so much, everyone. Um, I am a career changer into academia. You may have gotten a notion of that from my earlier comments, but I spent about 20 years working in industry before I changed careers uh, sort of midlife to join uh, this academic institution. And I'm so happy that I did. And uh, when I first came, I ran a very small program in risk management and insurance because that was my professional background. But it wasn't long before the, the dean then asked me to start the MBA program here at Utica University. And so I was the first director for the program. Um, I put my heart and soul into this. So I'm very proud of it. I think it's a very well-constructed and well-thought-out program. Um, and I didn't do the thinking behind that. I had lots of colleagues to help me. But we are a 30-credit hour program, which means our work is really intensive. Uh, we're not going to get into a lot of uh, tangential topics that sometimes we like to talk about in academics. We're going to concentrate on 30-credit hours of work that really lines up quite well with what a manager does in a contemporary workplace today. So we're going to talk about leadership skills. We're going to talk about data and how it drives our decision making. We're going to look at marketing and logistics and how all of those things sort of collapse onto each other in today's world in the way we do business. We're going to specifically uh, focus on strategy and strategic thinking, and that's my area of teaching in the MBA. Um, and then we're going to get you into some specializations that allow you to do some intensive study in an area that makes a lot of sense to you. I think for the folks in this call, the things that are probably very attractive are the business analytics and our cybersecurity leadership 
Business analytics is a fairly new discipline here at Utica University, but I've got to tell you, it is run by a faculty member who is absolutely fantastic. This guy can move big data like nobody else. Dr. Michael McCarthy leads that unit, and I actually am researching with him on a grant from the Robert Woods Johnson Foundation, where we're dealing with data sets that have about 32 million lines of data to give you a sense of how big that is. Um, so he's a great teacher, just a phenomenal teacher and, and really a, a knowledgeable person. In cybersecurity leadership, I also am so proud of this unit. Um, Utica University has been a leader in cybersecurity space since the early 2000s. We were one of the first uh, institutions to offer education in cybersecurity. And we are fortunate right now to have programs led by two um, professionals who um, adopted academics as a second career, much like I did, um, Dr. Leslie Corbo and Professor Andrew Carr. Between them, they have over 30 years of experience in cybersecurity, and that's in a discipline that, mind you, only came into being probably in the 2000s or late 1990s. So uh, they have a wealth of experience in professional roles, and they have built an incredible program. Um, and our cybersecurity leadership track gives you a really great look at how to work in a managerial or leadership position in the cybersecurity industry. Elizabeth, I think we have some specifics on how our um, agreement is working with the uh, upgrad group. Is that the next slide? I apologize. I'm having some problems getting the slides to me. There we go. Sorry. Yeah, so it's not quite the slide I was thinking of, but it's the lead-in slide, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, let's get right here because uh, this is some detail. Um, so uh, I hope everyone can see this. It does uh, become a, a little bit of small print um, in the presentation. But just as Praneet said, um, with our partner in India, you're going to be taking a um, uh, total of 14 credits. Um, Nine, and we're going to credits. be bringing in nine. Yeah, so it's nine, but it, it transfers in as nine when you match it up with the Utica courses. Um, so you're finishing a good portion of our, um, what we call our business core or our business foundations. When you arrive at Utica, you're going to take nine in our business core, and those are going to be leadership. And our leadership course is great. We have a variety of faculty members who are both pure academics and those that have worked in professional fields in our second career academics who teach in that space. And we're gonna really focus on the soft skills and the leadership skills that you need to succeed in today's business world. Um, then you're gonna take uh, financial fluency. You're gonna take the second half of data-driven decision-making taught by a fantastic new faculty member, uh, Moon Sapyun, who's done a wonderful job. I will tell you, that's a stats course. A lot of people get a little nervous about stats. I've had people come to me and tell me that they love Dr. Hyun so much that they love stats now. This is how great this guy is in the classroom. And then strategy one and two um, with longtime faculty member, uh, Dr. Ferrara, who is a student favorite because he is so student um, centered. You'll take three classes in specialization. Um, at the same time, you'll sort of mix those in with your business core. Um, you'll do a capstone, and we'll talk a little about the capstone, I think. But our capstone project is uh, applied research, where you actually seek out a business to work on a real problem that, that they have or they've been presented with. Uh, we do have some projects, too, that uh, people approach us with that um, if you don't have a business partner, we can partner you with someone. Um, but these projects um, are something the students are keenly interested in because usually they're, they're something for their own employer or, or someone that they've met. Um, and they can see a real world solution coming out of the research they do and the consulting work they do with this company. Once you've done all that, so you're taking 21 credits here at Utica University, um, and you should be uh, able to... Uh, think about OPT and CPT opportunities um, either after or perhaps even while that's happening. So <clears throat> our program is really built to be a, a, a look at real world business. Um, we're gonna give you the theory uh, you need, but we're gonna concentrate on a lot of um, contemporary business issues and what's happening right now and what you need to know to be a successful uh, leader or manager in today's business world. 
do you want me to go ahead and talk a little bit about our student support, Elizabeth? Or, or I can do that and then yeah, I'll come Why back. don't you go ahead? Yeah. Um, so I think one of the things, oh, go ahead. Can I, yeah, I just want to take a quick break and just get all the questions forth to you so, so we can take a mid uh, hold and just answer everything that's what they are so far. So number one thing is, can you talk a little bit more about the finance and accounting specialization? That's number one. Um, the second thing which I want to take at this point is how is the STEM MBA beneficial? So these two things, if you'd like to take them. Sure. Sorry, I'm just writing down, so I don't forget. Uh, well, the finance and accounting, that's a, a great uh, specialization as well. So we have uh, multiple accounting programs here at Utica University at both the undergrad and graduate level. And the uh, finance and accounting uh, specialization allows you to choose from a range of accounting and finance courses that we have. Uh, some of them focus on uh, higher level accounting skills. Some of them focus on higher level finance skills. And we actually have the benefit of having a very strong economic or sometimes identified as financial crime um, unit here at Utica University that supports our forensic accounting. Um, specialization. So you're enabled to take courses um, that make sense to you. There are some recommendations um, in our finance and accounting specialization, but you can sort of mix and match courses there um, that match your personal academic and professional interests. And they range from straightforward accounting issues to forensic accounting issues, um, which is a real benefit um, and something you don't see at many institutions. The second question was, how the STEM MBA um, beneficial? One of the things that I've experienced in my life, um, and it's not the longest life yet, but it's not the shortest either. I, I've been around a while, is that STEM fields ask us to focus intensely on a, on a discipline in technology or science, engineering, and become real experts in that discipline. And a real expert in a discipline is invaluable. But oftentimes those folks, as their career advances, as you want to be something more, move beyond your entry-level positions, you need skills in leadership. You need to understand how the business where you work is actually functioning or operating. What's that financial statement actually mean? how do I deal with a, a, a personnel issue that's very uncomfortable for me? And what we know is that if we look at how a leader spends most of their day, how a CEO spends most of his or her day, 70% of that is in communication and dealing with people issues. And MBA helps you get comfortable with those issues. Right from the start with our leadership course and our financial courses where we're trying to discern what does this financial statement say to me? When we're talking about strategic management and thinking, how do we look at these issues and make good decisions for our, our entity or our business as a whole? And the courses that we've chosen in our STEM um, concentrated areas or specializations really help meld. We hope that they bridge between that place where you're a technician or a frontline worker and actually moving into that place where you sort you understand what's going on there, but you know now how to approach that from a leader or a leadership role, not necessarily the doer or the frontline role. And that's why MBA STEM programs are so very important. If I could add, just at a practical level, though, the, the STEM designation also at, at a super just tactical level gives you the ability to have three years of OPT. Um, yes. And it also is recognized in the United States as incredibly important to, to the US economy, but also to economies around the world. So there's in addition to the academic perspective that, that Stephanie just um, talked about, there is this practical part for students who are considering uh, these programs because it gives you three years to to work on OPT uh, assignments here in the United States. Thanks, Elizabeth and Stephanie. I think we answered that. Um, 
there are so many more, but I'd leave it to you to decide would you want to go ahead with this or do we take some? You know, we only have a couple other slides. So let's finish the slides and then we'll take all the questions. So, you know, again, I think we talked a lot about this, but I think I, I am a very big fan of how Dean Nesmith and her staff and faculty work together as an integrated unit. Um, to make sure that there's both a success coach assigned to all the students in the program, but also that there's this kind of warm um, and welcoming set of faculty and staff that work with students from getting them prepared for their visa interview um, all the way up to graduation. And I think it's part of our integrated model. Um, I think that the the admissions requirements are pretty well communicated on the UpGrad site, but I um, would again say English is incredibly important uh, to doing well in this program. Um, we do take a variety of different um, language tests, um, but these are our scores. Um, there is um, this is the international admissions page, but as I was thinking about it, they probably go through the upgrad page to apply. Um, but in any event, we have a very simple application and uh, this is all very clear. I wanna talk for a couple seconds just about optional practical training and how we have communicated with UpGrad and how we are communicating as faculty and staff about optional practical training. This is an incredibly important feature of our program. And I know is important to you as a student when you're considering studying in the United States. So we've talked about the um, notion of our location, um, but I, I do think we are working um, strenuously to make sure that you have opportunities um, for optional practical training, both here regionally, as well as in uh, Boston and New York. As I mentioned before, I had a 25 year career in, in Boston, Massachusetts. So my contacts are, are really quite rich in this area. And we also have enormous connections in New York City. Um, and, and again, I, I think this is, is really important as you're considering um, the program. We work very hard right from the beginning of the application process to connect you with faculty who can help you to figure out what are the best opportunities that you have and to really um, understand better what you're trying to achieve here in the United States. So we're, we're going to, um, I think, work with individuals um, on this. Um, very, almost before they come to the college. Um, and I, I also think that we our connections with UpGrad are super important because we are going to be communicating from the, the second you're, you've gone through the UpGrad um, uh, experience to make sure we're understanding what are the goals that you're trying to achieve. So now we're ready to take any questions that you might have. Or I'll just get started with the exact questions. Please give me a quick moment while I do that. Um, I think for the first part is that would I need an additional experience in business analytics to choose that specialized field? Um, that's number one, if you'd like to answer, Elizabeth. Maybe you could also combine that with cybersecurity um, as the two, because I think there's probably a lot of people here without that experience. Sure. Yeah. So, so, I'm gonna let Stephanie answer this question because I can see that she's she's got a response right away. So let me refer <laughs> to her. Sure. So, so for both the STEM specialized fields, cybersecurity and BA, would they need an additional experience, Stephanie? Yeah. So um, let me jump in there and and give you an answer. In the business analytics, um, you do not. So we'll start you out with a basic uh, introduction to to business analytics and take you through a, a series of courses that help you build some fundamental skills there. Um, are you gonna feel as comfortable as Dr. McCarthy in massaging a data set with 32 million lines of data? Perhaps not, but you're gonna be on a, a great path to start that and you're gonna understand how, how 
the approach works there. In cybersecurity, um, again, no. So there is an option to start that sequence of study with a basic introductory course that will in introduce you to cybersecurity. And let me tell you something about our faculty. Um, I'm a lawyer by training, I told you that, an MBA. I've been a manager um, for a long time and worked in uh, risk management. And I had written on cybersecurity risk management, but was not a technician. Uh, I picked up a course this fall to teach that's a little more technical. And with the work of our faculty, they took me through the equivalent of this introductory course. And I'm able to lead our students in things like Last week, we hacked into somebody else's imaginary server and transferred files back out. So we can get you those basic cybersecurity skills and add in some of the larger questions that we deal with in cybersecurity leadership, uh, how we protect uh, infrastructure and, and food supply chains and things like that. So for both of those, you can get in without prior experience, but if you have some prior experience in data analytics or cybersecurity, you can also take these courses and have a wonderful, expansive experience as well. And if I could just add to that too, I think this is something where we would work. Uh, we would be, cons we're super supportive of people coming in without the experience, but this is also something we're gonna work to make sure that your CPT and OPT opportunities are really focused on, on uh, making sure you, you get the right type of experience. Because if it is your goal to enter this field, then you need to make sure you have a very focused experience here in the United States. Um, and, and that's something that we would concentrate on. Thanks. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask a quick question. Sorry, Pranit, I'm going to jump in really quickly um, uh, because this is a question I've seen a couple um, people ask. And this maybe is more for you, Elizabeth, but Stephanie, you can probably add as well. Um, if you can give an idea of living, living costs, expenses, those kinds of things, as well as sort of the local area. Um, you know, uh, if you haven't been to the Utica area, you probably don't know a lot about it. I recently was there, as you as you both know, and really enjoyed my experience there. But I think it'd be good to give students kind of an idea of, of housing options, but also kind of what the living expenses and, and um, things to do around the area, too. So... Um... As we have said many, many times, it's a very affordable place um, to live, to research, to learn. Um, I am not gonna, off the top of my head, I can't remember what all the living costs are that we put in the brochure, but I am gonna say this. There is both the option of living on campus. Um, and if you live on campus, there is some opportunity to apply for small scholarships related to living on campus. Um, because it, it, it is ultimately better as a community if we're, we're living on campus. Um, but around the surrounding areas, this is a very affordable place to live and to get apartments. Many students choose to do that. Um, an apartment in, in Utica um, is usually, um, a shared apartment is usually around $1,000 for two two people um, to live and you can potentially put other people into this apartment. And we do have opportunities for people to um, live off campus and to support them in, in, in doing that. Um, but I think ultimately um, you find that in a town like Utica, um, there is um, a wealth of reasons why people choose to live on campus. And there are dorms that have cooking facilities. Um, this is, a, as Jerry can attest, a wonderful campus um, with a range of different um, uh, apartment style living or dorm living if you choose to do that. Um, but I think ultimately, um, the difference between going to school in a place like Utica and going to other parts of the United States is almost uh, 30 to 40 percent cheaper than it would be anywhere else in the U.S. Jerry, does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. And for those on the call that that 
do remember me from other calls. Um, I, I live actually in the local area. I'm about three, three hours from Utica um, Drive, and it is a really beautiful place to live in the U.S. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about, you know, the West Coast or the South because it's hot all the time. But um, do keep in mind that, you know, that that warmer weather is great, but for 12 months, that can be a lot. And you are coming to a new country and a new experience, and it is fun to enjoy things like winter and, and a nice spring and a nice fall. So keep those things in mind when you're looking at studying abroad the northeast um, of the U.S. I've lived in I've lived in California I've lived in Texas I've lived in Australia and the northeast is my favorite place I've ever lived just because of the different seasons we have and the different environment and atmosphere we have as well so just keep that in mind I, I think that's one of the things that students don't tend to think about as often but it is an important thing because it is you know some of that personal uh, happiness that you you can have as while well studying as well. So, Pranit, you have a, another question I think you wanted to ask. Yes, there's so many of them. I just want to get started so we finish in time. Uh, the number two question of Stephanie or Elizabeth is that Ronak says, I'm a finance professional who studied investment banking from IIM Calcutta and business analytics from IIT Delhi. How can this program help me? So I think, Stephanie, I think, uh, long story short, he wants to know if I know BA, uh, how, how does the MBA BA cement what I'm looking for about five years from now? Yeah, I, that's a great question. So, and, and that question sort of fits really well with some of the things I've been talking about this morning. So uh, what first, congratulations to you. It sounds like you have a wonderful set of technical skills and you are a frontline expert that anyone would want in their company. Um, you, you've made some really dynamic choices for your, your future career there. What the MBA is going to do is help you develop that next level of skills that will help you push up through the ranks in a company. So again, technical skills always get us great frontline jobs. But when we want to start to accelerate our careers and become a director or an AVP or a VP or even get into the C-suite, we need a set of skills that's different. It's almost a 180 degree change from what we've been doing. So we need to be able to take that technical expertise we have that we've built over years through study and professional practice. And we need to start to think about how that applies. And we make decisions based on the good of the whole entity, or we start to make our own business, right? Because sometimes what we would prefer to do is work for ourselves and not for someone else. That's a unique set of skills that you start to build. And the MBA is specifically built to help you build those skills to move into the next level of your business career. Thank you, Stephanie. I think that beautifully sums up. Uh, I just want to go back to Elizabeth to ask if she's got anything to add or shall we move on to the next question? Tell, tell just, me again. I just, just want to know if you want to add something to it. No, I actually very much loved her answer and I think we'll go on to the next question. Sure. Uh, I completed the IMT Ghazibagh program from Upgrad. What is the deadline to apply for on campus? So should, do we have a spe specific date in mind if they want to take up the spring intake, Stephanie and Elizabeth? Well, I'll step in and say from an admissions process here, we can process applications continuously, and we do. The question is going to be um, the timing in order for you to get um, your interview um, in order to get immigration papers to come to the U.S. And Elizabeth is a little more um, versed in what those deadlines are. It's very are. funny because I'm going to like pump this to Jerry for a second too. Um, <laughs> um, so from our perspective, we're happy to take um, students for the spring intake, but the applications um, would need to come right away. Um, Jerry, are we allowing spring intakes? Um, yeah, I, I'll speak more so in a general term. Um, you know, I've always looked at, uh, you know, a, an intake, you know, you're probably going to need at least two months before that intake starts for you to get your visa sorted and all of those kinds of things. So um, you're probably going to need at least a month before that to get your application in. So I would say about three months out for your from your your start date or your intended start date as a student, you really should have your application in and ready to go. And that's also if you're going to be very diligent and quick about about as soon as you get your acceptance letter, you know, uh, give your bank statements, get your I-20 and all those kinds of things. There's a 
It's a very long and detailed process from application to I-22 visa for the U.S., and you need to make sure that you allow yourself enough time. Um, and as you, some of you may know, the visa uh, appointments in India have been a little sporadic over the last 12 months um, with some, some backlogs recently. But now that the fall semester has passed, uh, there is some more availability. So, you know, to, to Elizabeth's point really is you should be getting that in as soon as possible, especially those applications. Um, and I would say over well, the Jerry, next month gonna, or so, yeah. I'm going to Go just ahead. say now that you you have 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 said what you just said, we we are taking applications um, up to October third, so okay. for the spring intake. So because of all of the things that you said, which is that we have to process all this information and get you prepared. Uh, to come to the United States, but if there is a way you can get your application to us by October 3rd, where we will get you a decision back, and it's complete, we'll get you a decision back within a week, um, and we process I-20s um, and go through this procedure very quickly. Upgrad is a premier mm -hmm. partner of Utica, so um, they are really moved to the top of the queue, um, but you know, the time is short. So if you are considering it for January, you've got to really be putting this together in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then we're super happy uh, to work with you um, to move this along. To be super safe, I've just given them a date of September 30th. So we can also get some time to review everything and make sure that we okay. do the correct validated documents only. The next question is, so a lot of you have asked about the eligibility. So 55% in your standard 12th and your undergraduate degree, degree and your backlogs should not be more than 10. Make sure you have all of that um, all set and you're good to go. The other thing is GMAT waiver is very much in place. You don't need to appear for it. All you've got to do is get the IMT Ghaziabad uh, course successfully completed. Uh, once you have that completed, that is the time when you can finally apply for the I-20. Uh, before that, you can, of course, apply for, an, uh, for a conditional offer from Utica. If you've done with your IMD, just make sure you send us your transcripts. You send us your undergraduate degree, all your transcripts, your standard 12, and IELTS. Like Elizabeth was mentioning, you can do take IELTS or TOEFL or Duolingo. And make sure you send those results as well. And like Jerry was mentioning, we have to be very careful about the visa appointments because uh, you know, recently it's not that you will apply for the visa when you get it next week. Sometimes it takes over a month, so make sure you're very careful about this. Uh, but but I'm super hopeful because the fall intake, like you know, uh, has this pass. So, so so you've got less students applying for spring. I already have an MBA in marketing HR. I have a total work experience of three and a half years. Will I be allowed to pursue an MBA in business analytics? Will I get rejected because I already have an MBA? I think I can go back to Jerry, Stephanie, Elizabeth, and have that answer. Um, I, th I think I, I was just going to add. I, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Jerry. Uh, well, I was just going to, I think what um, that question is really asking is more so about the visa um, process. So if you do have an MBA and you're coming to the U.S. for an MBA, um, you know, there are going to be some questions typically from my experience from the embassy about why are you doing why are you doing another MBA? Um, so if you are doing another MBA and it is specialized in a different area, that's where you really need to be prepared to talk about that area. Talk about, you know, if, if you've done an MBA in HR and you're looking at cyber, why it is you're coming to cyber or business analytics, um, uh, you know, and, and the reason that you're really looking to specialize in that area through this MBA. Also make sure that you're uh, very forward about, um, you know, the advantages an MBA from the U.S. brings you. Um, for, I'm, I'm guessing that your MBA is probably from India, um, which is very different to what you're going to experience in the U.S. So when you're in that, uh, when you're at the embassy, if a question does come up, you just need to be prepared to answer it. You're not going to be rejected a visa because you have an MBA and you're coming for an MBA, but there are potentially going to be some questions on why you're just doing another MBA. So just be prepared on why it is you're doing that um on the admission side i'll let elizabeth talk about but on yeah, the visa I, side i'd like uh, to um echo what jerry was saying and i would encourage this student to um reach out either through Pranip or, or jerry and 
and write to us directly. I have a lot of experience with this particular subject, and I think we can help you to um, make a compelling case about the plan of study, the optional practical training, the ways that you're, you're really um, having a very different experience. We, of course, want to make sure you're having a very different experience. So I think this is something we would like to work with Stephanie on and, and craft something individual for you, for you, but we're super happy to do that. Thanks, Elizabeth. There are questions around IMD Ghazi about, so it's an online course, which means essentially you can keep working on the side. If you're an undergraduate degree holder or you're a working professional, you're, you're working somewhere, I think the benefit of the boon of the course is that you can continue doing it online until you graduate from the course. As, as soon as you're done, we'll start processing your application to Utica. So I hope that answers you, I mean that it's an online course and which essentially means you can carry on working or if you're an entrepreneur, that's what we, uh, One of my questions to Elizabeth and Stephanie is, look, I've done my master's uh, in the US. I think one of the biggest platforms I got, or one of the most lucrative things that I'm grateful for is that it, the US gives you a lot of networking opportunities that no other country in the world would. Uh, about 121 out of the four, Fortune 500 firms actually in the US. That's another thing. And second is, I think, as a student, we're all, we, we all come with the bent of mind that how, so when I distinguish universities, I'm looking at what, which kind of universities can get me what kind of OPT opportunities. So what is your take on that with respect to Utica? How does the OPT opportunity base stand out? And that's what three or four students have also asked me, uh, how is that going to work out like? So I'll, I'll go first and let Stephanie answer. You know, I'm going to go back to something I said um, way at the beginning, which is about kind of old world, small town values, but in a global context. Um, first, our networking opportunities are incredible here. And ultimately, um, sorry, I don't, I've done everything humanly possible to get the phone to stop ringing, but it just keeps ringing, apologies. Um, our, our network opportunities are incredible here. And it, um, it it's both from a regional level as well as with our alums, with our connections with other companies um, inside the United States. And if you look at the outcomes and how people are placed here um, from the MBA, it's one of the best degrees here um, at the university. But the OPT opportunities is something that we have focused on from the second we met Jerry. So we, we will have an individual who will be, will be working with students to look for OPT opportunities. I would also say that networking in the United States has changed dramatically as a result of COVID. So when COVID happened and um, things went to a virtual environment, um, it opened up a lot of opportunities for thinking about how networking is done um, in a very different way. So we have lots of opportunities to encourage students um, to network here, um, both regionally and throughout the United States. But I think now you see that there is a very big change of mindset um, as the COVID situation has improved. And we have more and more opportunities for our students um, to both network and think about OPT opportunities um, locally and, and throughout the region. Stephanie, did you want to add to that? Yeah, um, Elizabeth, thank you. I was just supplement what Elizabeth said because her answer is very thorough. Um, let me talk about the classroom experience in our MBA. So uh, this MBA, even pre-pandemic, we were uh, using and, and leveraging virtual technology to teach people all around the world. So our MBA classes are not limited to a regional Northeast sort of perspective. Now, many of our students are, but because we allow students to join in real time using virtual technology, our classroom. So we have students both present physically in the classroom and present virtually in the classroom. You'll actually meet students who um, come from all around the United States. So um, it's a very dynamic experience. Coupled with that, the fact that our, our curriculum is built 
with a lot of team and group interaction and project work. So you'll work on different teams in different classes with people who are present with you in the room and people who are joining you via our high technology breakout rooms in the virtual space to have a real time conversation about whatever you're working on. So you'll make a great network, not limited to the Northeast or the people just here on campus. And two, you'll actually practice skills that through the pandemic, we all learned, hey, we can actually conduct business in this manner, right? Um, so our MBA has been doing that since its inception. Um, so we were sort of way ahead of the curve when the pandemic hit. Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think for the cybersecurity elective that we've uh, proposed towards students to be taking up, we've asked at least for them to have a decent computer science or cybersecurity experience. Just wanted to clear out that that's very much in place, right? That we would need that. And how much of it is doable? It, it, it's doable. So uh, again, um, a, a little experience, you're going to get a much richer experience. But if you were stone cold, no experience, um, you would gain something from the MBA. Which means they're still eligible to very much apply, right? So yes. I do remember someone asking that uh, I have little or no experience in coding or cybersec. Can I still take it? Well, yes, you can. Yes. Uh, I'm working as a Tableau developer. Can you please tell me what business analytics and BI tools will be we learning in the business analytics MBA? Okay. Uh, so the content of the business analytics courses um, start you out with a, a refresh or perhaps for some people, uh, an introduction to statistical analysis um, and how it's used and misused. Um, and then uh, you'll get into some courses where you start to look at using coding um, and we work in R, Python, and Julia um, uh, uh, for the most part. And you start to understand how to use coding to wrangle data um, in large data sets. And um, you um, start to look at how once it's wrangled, uh, you use it for your statistical analysis. And then uh, we uh, walk you through the different ways to present that and talk about it. Um, so that other people can understand what it is you're seeing in, in the data you're using. Thank you. I think we're pretty much done with almost every question that we had. Elizabeth, the final and the million dollar question is what, you know, what additional scholarships are in place for these students? And I just want you to comprehensively touch upon the fact that how affordable is this MBA and faring against some of the best MBAs in the US? So I'm grateful for the, the question. Um, let me say, start by the latter part of, of what you said. Um, we have worked very hard to make our MBA affordable. Um, this is so that it is, um, so that people from around the world can have the opportunity to study here. So our MBA is in many cases, half the price of a, of a comparable MBA program. And if you couple that with the cost of living here, this is almost a 75% dif difference in the cost that somebody would incur to, to go to another MBA program. So as a rule, we do not um, have many scholarships available, um, but there are some limited opportunities. There certainly are some opportunities for people who are living on campus and looking for some scholarship opportunities to, to, to live on campus. We also will have some opportunities where people can get paid uh, both curricular and optional practical training. Um, uh, positions where they uh, will, will have some slots available and that will be uh, available uh, to, to candidates to, to buy for. Um, we also have a, a market in the United States right now that is very much looking for qualified employees. Um, so uh, paid positions for OPT are, are much uh, easier to get than they have ever been probably in the history of this country. And 
a reputation for producing superior, um, not only analytically trained students, but students that have the leadership, leadership skills they need to be great performers um, allows us to um, have many doors open to our students. So I feel very confident that this is an affordable option. I will also send, um, there is uh, there are some loan programs available to students um, that work with Utica University. I will make sure that that is sent through to you, that you can, typically that is given out to students when they are admitted to a program here. Um, but I'm gonna send it to you so you can make that available to students as they're thinking about the opportunities. Uh, because it all comes down to this singular point, which is that we really want to work with qualified academic students to make this a reality for them. And I hope that through our presentation today, um, you can see how committed we are to the students from upgrad and uh, how much we would welcome the opportunity to answer any additional questions people might have in the future. Absolutely, I think you've been extremely generous uh, both to you, Stephanie, and yourself. And I think we should, I mean, ideally you've addressed almost anything that was asked. And I think in my opinion, I think Jerry would second me on that, is that of all the MBAs that we actually have, uh, that we work with in the US, it's probably half the cost. And that in itself is a scholarship. And I think sometimes you measure or you uh, fear an MBA against the second one by looking at the quality versus the price so what is the return that you're getting on investing that amount of it? which i mean knowing the university i think it is a great value uh, for the money you're investing and i think uh, the strategic location of the university makes it easier for you uh, to be extremely employable one but two i think learn new age skills that will eventually help you in the long term uh, i think utica is a deal i mean i've always mentioned that to everybody that uh, you know an mba in ba so, so because we sell MSBA, we know the amount of traction that the course has. And MBA BA is, of course, something that cements and that, like Stephanie was mentioning, that you can, of course, look at managerial or senior roles within that field. I think BA or analytics is actually the new fuel that most companies are going, you know, are dependent on for their growth. And so I think it's 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 a very lucrative field. So keen, and I think I'm so thankful and grateful to Jerry and uh, the university team for making this MBA part, 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 partnership um, happen. And uh, for any questions at all, I'm just going to give you guys uh, my email address. You can always uh, put down any query, any doubt um, to me on my email. And I'll make sure that it reaches Stephanie or Elizabeth if it's worth their time. Uh, for any ad admission requirements, of course, you can come back to me. I, you know, I'd, uh, I'd love to answer that as well. Uh, Stephanie and Elizabeth, any valedictory or final note for these students? I just want to say thank you all for this opportunity to speak with you, and um, I would love to welcome you to the Utica University campus. And I would finally say, um, certainly I echo what Stephanie um, said, um, but I, I would also encourage you to think about this as a real opportunity that is um, ultimately based. Um, so I think I told you at the beginning of my remarks that I came from Boston, Massachusetts, where I worked uh, at very large institutions um, with MBA programs and other global programs as well. But I came here because this is a very special place. And I feel, um, like you will have the, the same kind of experience. It's not just one of the most cost-effective ways to think about an MBA. It is ultimately one of the best academic programs I have ever worked with in my career in a city that is absolutely wonderful with people who are, um, you know, the kinds of people you'd like to have a cup of tea with or a beer. So I ultimately um, hope that we will have the opportunity to work with you. And I am grateful for, for the time we spent today. I'm sorry, I was on mute. Uh, thank you so much, Elizabeth, Jerry, and Stephanie for your time. Uh, I Once again, I put uh, my email address down for any questions that you may have. Uh, feel free to write to us. Thank you, everybody. Wishing you a great week ahead. And the applications for um, 
the IMT Gaziabad course have begun. You can apply to us anytime now, starting now. The Utica pages are live on our website. Uh, the brochures are available with us. Everything is all set. If you want to apply for the January intake, September 20, uh, spring 23, which is, and you're done with the IMT Gaziabad course, now is the time. September 30th is the deadline for you to apply. If you're looking for the fall intake, so fall is like September, October 23, um, now is the right time to start the IMT Ghaziabad uh, course with us. Um, I think we've been clear. My colleague Arushi has put down a few links to how you can access the master's or bachelor courses, especially the MBA with Utica. Thank you very much, everybody. Wishing you guys a great week ahead. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.